take you back to one of our top stories on News of Prime, which is UCT Professor Richard Callan's withdrawal from the panel that was set up by Parliament to look at whether there's grounds of impeachment processes being instituted against President Sora Maposa to do with the burglary at his Palapala farm back in 2020. Callan says he did not want to clutter or impair the probe into the alleged theft of foreign currency at the President's residence. At the same time, MPs have also been debating the establishment of an ad hoc committee to look into whether state agencies were used as part of the alleged cover-up. The DA brought that debate forward. We we can now speak to the party's chief, Web Sifuwe Kwahube, who's joining us on the line. Sifuwe, very good evening to you. Uh, grateful for your time. You've described the developments around Professor Calland as a victory for accountability. Yeah, good evening, uh, uh, Tim Begile, and uh, good evening to, to your viewers. Look, um, as we had initially stated last week when we had written our formal objection, to the speaker that, of course, you know, this is not a, a, a reflection of Professor Callan's uh, ability to, to be an expert in his field. But this is about how do we put together an independent panel that will be beyond reproach, where it will not be challengeable in the future, where people are claiming that one of the panelists has uh, essentially played into the political fray and has often made political commentary which can be for or against the president. And so, and that is on the, that is on that basis that we submitted our objection. And uh, we welcome the removal of Professor Calland. And uh, we are really hoping that now the speaker can get on with the business of appointing the panel, deciding on the terms of reference, and getting the panel to, 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 to get started on its work. While Professor Callan has accepted his exclusion from this panel, he does say in a statement that he is fiercely independent. He then goes on to say that as a trained lawyer, he's capable of assessing evidence without bias and then reaching a conclusion based on the country's various laws. Why do you think that would not be convincing if... Ultimately, also, he would not be the only person making the decisions or drawing a conclusion about whether, indeed, we need to institute an impeachment process against the president. Look, the reality here is that, and this is something that I explained um, to the speaker in great detail, that whether or not Professor Calland was going to be able to be absolutely objective and absolutely, you know, be committed to the process, but they remember that bias is sometimes perceived. And what you don't want is the notion where somebody, a political party, a member of parliament, uh, comes back to say, you know, after the month that the panel has sat and done its work and says, look, on the basis of these utterances that uh, this legal expert has made, we are of the view that he didn't walk in there as an independent, objective uh, panelist. And so that was what we were saying, that yes, it, it doesn't take away from the fact that he may personally feel that he could be objective and as a trained lawyer, he would be, have the ability to do so. But, 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 but perception also matters, particularly in a highly political, contentious issue like this one. Does it mean then, Sivue, that uh, political commentators, be they uh, lawyers, uh, professors of law, um, people who work in politics departments at various universities that we speak to quite frequently on channels like Newsroom Africa should all accept once they begin to, to dabble in that role as commentators that they are automatically excluded from panels of this nature going forward. Do you think that's fair to say as a rule going forward? No, I don't, I don't think so. I think, it, uh, I think one, we ha one has to consider the nature of the, the panel that one is considered for. I mean, the Section 8 and 9 inquiry that we are looking into right now is something that firstly has never happened in Parliament. It will be the first of its kind. And secondly, Tim Begile, it requires, as you know, that it's going to require a meticulous um, imp you know, a application of the rules of Parliament. And also it's going to require the buy-in and the acceptance of uh, political parties across the board in, in, in Parliament. Our view was that the, the, the judgment of the speaker here was poor mm -hmm. to begin with because, of course, Professor Calland has never made his political utterances a secret. This is the nature of the work that he does. So our view here is that this kind of panel uh, is something that really required 
people who have not paid into the political fray. Um, and we even made a point, that, uh, an argument, that perhaps members of the judiciary are best placed um, to participate in something like this. DHU for Severe Kwa thank you for your time.